Thanks, darling. Hey, everybody. It's Yasmin here. So, I don't know about you, but uh, we are in lockdown here in the UK. And, uh, I mean, it could be a long, cold winter if they're going to do this to us. So I thought I would start doing my 11.11 again, my 11.11 AMs again. Um, oh, damn, I can't see your comments on Facebook. I can see them on Instagram. Let me see if I can... Ah, Harriet, yes, I can see you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, everybody. Um, I can see your comment, Harriet. Is anyone else saying hello? Oh, good. Heather. Hi, everybody. Um, it looks like I'm in the snow <laughs> on Facebook and I'm sparkling on Instagram, so that's cool. So, um, yeah, look, I mean, I started doing these uh, last lockdown and I think last lockdown was kind of harder because um okay this is too much snow isn't it on facebook what do you think guys too much snow tell me i started doing these last year um last year Feel, feels like a year ago i started doing these in about march or april or something because people said you know help us to get through lockdown and i was like sure why not and as i've said a million times now it actually helped me at least as much as um, it helped anyone else. And so then I went on holidays and I had one nasty comment about my extended holidays by the lake, about, you know, lucky you, it's all right for you, you go on holiday, me, me, me. Um, but apart from that, I think everybody was quite fine with me going on holidays for a long time. Um, I don't have to justify it, but you know, I work really, really hard and I've got a, 14 year old son and we have six weeks holidays so we took six weeks off suck it up baby <laughs> and i worked the whole time actually i worked far too much last holidays i didn't do the 11 11s but i was actually editing my um my diary for next year which i don't have here but i was editing it um or is it, is it the one i was finishing writing the one for 2022 i don't even know anymore Anyway, the long and the short of it is I got out of the habit of doing these uh, daily messages. And so quite a few people said, oh, I miss your messages. Thank you. Thank you. And I just thought, you know, I'll do them again. But uh, anyway, we're now in lockdown. So I thought, OK, I will actually do them. So what we generally do here, for those of you who are joining me for the first time, it's usually about 20 minutes long. I am actually going to start up the chanting again as well, but we're going to do that on Zoom because it's just better on Zoom. I'll do all the links for it um, today uh, so you know where to go and what the password is to get online and stuff. Um, and we'll, I'm not sure exactly which chant we're going to do. We'll probably do the Maha Kali one. Um, or I might do the shark clearing one, which people love as well. I'm not really sure. I'm going to actually consult my, with my teacher in India if I can manage to get through. Who knows? And uh, we look at the stars. I mean, what I've done here is I've actually printed out... This is a calendar that everyone in my Sun, Moon and Stars membership gets every month. Um, it's actually about five pages long. I've just printed out two pages worth because I thought I can just refer to this and it will help me to know what's going on in the skies every day. So then I can talk about that so I can help people understand the energies and uh, plus of course we will do card readings which I know people really like as well. So um, I guess what I'd like to say here and now is uh, you know, for those of us in the UK in lockdown, I don't think it's going to be as intense as before. For one thing, if you've got kids, like I told you, I've got my son, Louis, who's 14. You know, he's at school now. He goes off to school. And what we do in my family is we drive him to school, we drop him off, and then my husband drives home. And I get out about half an hour from home, half an hour's walk from home, and I walk the rest of the way and I listen. Usually I listen to a podcast or an audio, audible book, or I call my mum in Australia, or today I called my friend Carolyn. Um, you know, and I just do that. So I don't think it's going to be as bad. I don't think there's so much fear around as there was last time, because fear was the big problem last time. But I still think, you know, it's probably going to drag on. I think what's happening for a lot of people now, or maybe it's just me, but it's really starting to miss my friends. Like, I love my friends, and I really miss my friends. And that's probably the hardest thing, is not being able to see my friends. Um, 
anyway it's not about me it's about you you know what can I do to help you let me know in the comments actually what you'd like to get out of these and uh, I'd also you know I am just going to mention the American election right now and I'm not going to be partisan I'm not going to you know I had someone yes the other day who was really angry with me for telling people to get out and vote just because I'm you know I'm a big believer in democracy and however the vote goes you know that's it happens whatever happens happens um, but let's talk about the astrology of what's going on right now with the vote so we've actually had just for those of you who are interested in astrology maybe you'll learn a little bit about astrology so basically we've had mercury retrograde okay mercury retrograde uh, is Mercury is the planet of communications and up to four times a year it goes backwards. I've actually written a book about, ah, there it is. I happen to have a copy right here. I actually wrote a book about it um, with um, my fellow UK astrologer, Kim Farnell. We wrote the Mercury retrograde book. And um, basically Mercury goes retrograde up to four times a year. And... Um, when it does, there can be chaos and confusion and misunderstandings. So if you're a regular viewer, you will know that I've been talking about Mercury retrograde uh, coming up and especially actually on my radio show, I've been mentioning it on there, talking about the fact that the latest Mercury retrograde cycle ended on the day of the US election. And we knew it was going to cause chaos and we knew it was going to be a big thing. And guess what? You know, like I, I even wrote this. I actually can't remember where I wrote it. I'd pluck it out and I'd show you if I could. But I literally remember that I wrote things like there'll be people claiming victory and then not claiming victory and demanding recounts and all the things that are happening were exactly what you would expect to have um, happening when the USA election, you know, really one of the biggest elections in the world every four years, uh, is held on the day that Mer Mercury stationed. It's called stationing. When Mercury stops, it's stationing direct. It means it's stopping. Mercury retrograde is stopping and it's, um, and it's now going to start moving forwards again, slowly but surely. So, you know, that's what we're getting. Um, have you been glued to the news about it? I have. I found it really fascinating. I'm a political hound these days i was never in the least bit political back in the day but i think my son is so interested in politics he's kind of got me interested but yeah so you know now I'm, i understand in the states apparently i think it's that the election is always the first tuesday in november isn't it so they actually had no choice but i want to tell you a little story uh about american politics which i hope you will find interesting and then I'm going to do a shark clearing chart and then I'll do the card, okay? But this is the story. And you might have heard me tell this before because it, it, it has been told before. But it's to do with the fact that, um, you know, all the American things, these like the election and the inauguration always happen on the same day. There's a day that's chosen. So, for example, you know, if Donald Trump or um, Joe Biden had an astrologer, they would have been told, don't hold it on November the 3rd. It's the day Mercury's stationing. Like, it's going to be chaos. Obviously, they don't. But someone, and obviously they had no choice, um, but someone who is believed to have possibly had an astrologer or maybe still has an astrologer. In fact, he does have an astrologer because guess what? I never tell people this. So I'm not going to say it. But anyway, um, blah, blah, blah. So um, anyway... Barack Obama, whether you are a Democrat or a Republican, just listen to this story because it's kind of good. So basically what happened was that um, Barack Obama obviously won the presidency, you know, a few elections ago. And it was the time that he won the first time. I'm not sure when that was. I guess it was 12 years ago, was it? Because we've just had four years of Donald Trump and before that we had eight years of, of Barack Obama. So it would have been about 2006, 8, 2008? Yeah, 2008. And um, so it was when he was being sworn in. And all the astrologers all over the world, whether they were Democrat or they were Republican or they were, you know, didn't care, whatever, were like, oh, my God, the swearing in. You know, when in America, when they get, 
the inauguration they have that big thing where they all have all the people on the bleachers and all the crowds out the front and everybody watches and it's in Washington it's all kind of big and you know a big thing so Donald Trump's there with his Bible so, sorry not Donald Trump um Barack Obama's there swearing on the Bible and all the astrologers in the world are like oh my god the moon is void of course okay now what does that mean the moon there are various meanings but basically the most well-known one and the one i'm referring to here is when the moon has made its last aspect to one of the planets its last alignments to one of the planets before it changes signs so basically it's like it's untethered you know it's all over the place it's a wild loose thing and they say that what you begin when the moon is void of course bears no fruit okay so you do not want to swear yourself in as the president of the united states of america when the moon is void of course and everybody was like what's going to happen is he going to like something bad's going to happen or he's not going to complete his term or his presidency's going nowhere and everybody was like oh my god anyway it's said that donald uh, that barack obama may have had an astrologer in the white house for the simple reason that pretty much everything he did it he did at a very very auspicious time okay so anyway so he did this swearing in ceremony now do you remember what happened when he was sworn in up on i think it is at capitol hill i'm not sure do you remember what happened he flubbed his lines do you remember i can't remember what exactly happened did he say his name wrong or something like that he flubbed his lines okay so guess what happened he had to do the ceremony again so you can look all this up online it's all gospel because all the astrologers were watching it going oh my god so what actually happened was he did the ceremony again about five hours later in the oval office and i believe there was no film of it there was just one photo and i think there were like say three journalists allowed in to document it so they showed barack obama taking the oath of office as the president of the united states for the second time three or five hours later something like that when guess what the moon was no longer void of course so i believe because he he's said to have had an astrologer and we know he has an interest in astrology i believe that he knew that he'd taken his oath when the moon was void of course what you begin when the moon is void of course is said to bear no fruit and his astrologer said you can't do this you cannot take the oath when the moon is void of course this is like a disaster of monumental proportions so they came up with this plot this is all my you know imagining they came up with this plot that he would purposely flub his lines i mean come on the guy's a leo he's one of the best orators in the whole wide world is he really going to flub his lines they came up with this plan he would flub his lines and then he would do the actual proper swearing of the pledge a few hours later when the moon had changed signs and was no longer void of course so there you go that is my theory i don't know if it's true i don't know if it's true but i like to think it is so there you go a little political story for you all right so i think i'm going to for, let me just do a chart i'll do the chakra clearing chart i hope over the coming weeks you will learn it i will try and remember to put the uh words in the description uh tomorrow um, I think I'll do the, this chant here and then I'll do the proper, like the full 20 minute chanting or half hour chanting we do um, on Zoom separately. Uh, okay, so basically this is a chant to clear the chakras. I'm just going to do it once. Just listen and um, it will help clear our chakras. So we'll go into lockdown or, you know, in Australia they're all coming out of lockdown. They've got zero cases and all that, which is brilliant all right okay here we go are you ready close your eyes and just breathe we're going to do the chant then we're just going to sit silently for 30 seconds a minute and breathe and then we'll do a card Setting our intention to clear our energetic centers. Ah. 
Hariyam Nam Lam Mam Vam Simram Vam Yam Yam Ham Shiva Ram Swaha Voila, there we go. All right, who wants a card? Card for the day. Have my beautiful Moonology cards. Oh, somebody just gave me an angry face. Why are you angry? Don't be angry. Ah. <sighs> All right, here's the card. What does it say? Oh, my eyes. People say their eyes have got worse in lockdown. I really think my card. Oh, yeah, but yes, please, a card. I think my eyes have got worse in lockdown as well. Hi, Deepa. I'm going to do them every day, Monday to Friday. That is my commitment. I just put on makeup. I haven't worn this much makeup since my last 11-11. No, that's not true because I do my full moon. My new moon, I do put a bit of makeup on for that. Otherwise, I, as I've said, I'm literally capable of just spending all day in my PJs. So, you know, this is better. Better, better, better to get out, out, out. Okay, you ready? Here's the card. Oh, Interesting interesting now this is a card that's all about the south node and says don't let your past hold you back and it's very interesting for me actually because I've been reading a book called the book you wish your parents had read uh, which is about parenting because my son now being a teenager I thought well I might as well you know get into it because you know those teen years and all that and it's so interesting because basically what it talks about is the fact that it's the stuff that happens to us when we're kids that we then project onto our own children. And so that card, that's what that card means for me. What does it mean for you? Don't let your past hold you back. What does it mean? Let me know in the comments. I will read them afterwards or I can read some of them now. Um, let's just read the book as well for what it means. These are my moonology cards. As I like to tell people, I've been told they are now actually possibly the best-selling cards in the whole world. Can you believe it? It's extraordinary, really, when you think about it. Thank you to everyone who's bought them. All right. Okay, so the South Node, like the North Node, is a karmic point but it's opposite to the north node and relates to the past and perhaps even to past lives whether you're going through sorry whatever you're going through and whatever you're asking about there's a chance that age old programming and conditioning is stopping you from achieving all that you might mm -hmm. Do you feel stuck in something? This card will often come as a sign that the situation or relationship you're asking about has somehow become suffocating or toxic. It suggests that someone, even you, needs to be released, that there's some kind of addiction going on or an unhealthy attachment that needs to be sorted out. One thing is for sure, when you get to this card, you're being challenged to make some changes, even if staying where you are feels safer and easier. And the, uh, there's always an attune to the moon. The attune to the moon is, I release the past. I release the past. So, yeah, I release the past. Let's say that together. Hand on your heart chakra. I release the past. I release the past. I release the past. I release the past. So important. I can see myself projecting things that happened to me as a kid onto my son. And I don't want to do that anymore. Alrighty. So what day is it today? Thursday? I believe it's Thursday. So I'll see you tomorrow, Friday.
lots of love.